Hi, and welcome to this presentation where we will discuss and present the latest updates to the SAMI tool. We will first start by providing a brief recap of how SAMI works in a nutshell. Then we will show you the list of frameworks that we have added to the tool. Note, if you are looking for a framework which is not listed, we are happy to add frameworks, more frameworks to this list. It can be either a published framework, so a framework by a standardization body like NIST or uh, ISO. It can also be a framework that your organization is using, which means we are, this tool allows us to add a framework that is linked only to your organization. Then we will show you how we have implemented and refined the idea of controls management and control frameworks. Related to that, we have also implemented mappings between different frameworks and controls. Finally, we have also started looking for endorsed vendors, which will be listed mainly and currently only in SAM streams. So an endorsed vendor could help you achieve a certain maturity level for each stream. There will be only one vendor mentioned in each category and these vendors will be uh, pre-approved by Codific. If you are an implementation partner of the SAMI tool or you are looking to become one, we have also a set of features that have been added to the tool that can help you seamlessly manage different organizations that you are assessing. Let's start by briefly recapping how SAMI tool works in a nutshell. First, you start by selecting a scope for your assessment, whether it's a team, a business unit, or an organization. You can decide it by yourself. But for each scope, you are going to do an assessment. You're going to start by doing an assessment that indicates where that team is today for a specific framework. This works very well for maturity frameworks, program frameworks. It doesn't work that great for uh, compliance frameworks, but we also have added a way to score that even if you are using a compliance framework like ISO 27001. Now, you start by doing an assessment which entails answering a set of questions that reflect on each topic within a given standard. The assessment can be done either uh, internally inter as a self-assessment followed by a validation step where someone else checks, have you actually filled out correctly the answers? Have you interpreted the answers and the questions correctly? Or it could be combined where if you're a, an external assessor for an organization, you don't want to go through these steps, you want to combine them because you're immediately evaluating and you're providing validation remarks. So anything is possible in the tool. Once you're done with the assessment, once you know where you are, or once you know where an organization or a, or a specific team is, you can either in, go for an improvement, improve certain aspects of a specific activity, or you can mark it as a complete. And depending on if it's an improvement, you could still, after the improvement is done, you go back to the assessment step. And if it is complete, you can always manually revisit or even hook up automated expiration periods for each topic, like I said, uh, so that you visit it, revisit it and reassess. Let's go to the tool and see how that works actually in the tool. Now, I have picked OWASP SAM as a framework, but you can follow the exact same uh, flow for any framework in the tool. And in the next topic, I'm going to show you which frameworks we support. So let's go to compliance management, for instance. And I'm currently marked as an external assessor for this team. The team is called Armor and Shield. And I'm going to do an assessment for this team. Um, and the assessment is means that you're going to go through each SAM topic, which is called stream in SAM terminology, and you're going to fill out the answers that shape that uh, posture, the current security posture for this uh, team, for this scope. Complete picture of external compliance obligations. Let's say this is full answer. Uh, so for all applications, we have that in place for that team. Uh, and then we're going to go and click some other uh, answers uh, related to the assessment. Once we're done, we can also provide validation remarks and recommendations, but then this is the completion of that, of that stream. This is the assessment with the assessment results. 
Now, from this point on, we can either say, you know what, we're happy the way things are today. We don't want to improve today. And then I can mark it as complete. Or I can start an improvement process where I can plan uh, improvements and, and add also a date by which the improvement is planned to be completed. I'm going to go and complete this stream. Let's say there are no improvements necessary. Now, one of the cool features of the SAMI that we've added recently is called the expiration feature, where you can actually say, where you can denote in the tool that you have to revisit this after a certain amount of days. This is in days, and I'm going to pick a 180 days period, which means that the tool will automatically downgrade your scores. Yes. And then you will have to go and revisit this stream and this assessment aspect in order to either reconfirm that you're still there or maybe the scores could be downgraded or who knows maybe you have improved some things which you haven't done in the tool uh, and you can upgrade the scores once your assessment is fully completed by the way you can also see here that this is when the uh, the stream is going to expire once you complete a full assessment you can always go and check how you're doing in terms of reporting and not much has been changed in the reporting tab I'm going to switch, by the way, to another scope where I have a full assessment so that we can see all the results. Um, and I would say I'm going to turn off some of these charts to make it easier to follow. Let's stick with these charts. So this is the assessment scores for uh, aggregated by business function by the highest level of entities in SAM. One of the cool features we've updated to the SAMI tool is now you can click through all of these uh, charts so you can always see the individual uh, scores now we're going to the level of uh, security practices and now we're going to the level of streams and now we're going to the level of each activity and you can see how are you, how this team is doing for uh, all at all levels you can go back and forth through these levels another cool feature that has been there for quite some time but i would like to still highlight it you can also compare your streams in terms of their both absolute scores and relative scores uh, that means that you can see how your teams are doing related relevant uh, between each other this is an interesting chart for your executive uh, c-suite so they are not really interested about in in, in the detailed scores they want to see how teams are doing compared to each other and we have two ways of doing that this is an absolute uh, score comparisons where you see in terms of SAM scores this team has 2.55 another team has 2.10 but then he, from the SAM perspective the, the SAM model and SAM philosophy is you don't have to get to a full score of three you should get to a certain target that is related to your risk appetite and that risk appetite can be expressed in the SAMI tool using target postures. And I'll show that in a second. Using now those target postures, we can calculate a gap to target or percentage to target. This is actual percentage to target and the gap is the difference for each team. And this allows you to compare the teams uh, in a normalized fashion. So that means we're comparing here apples to apples. And by the way, yes, you can have different teams can have different target postures. If a certain team is delivering software for a nuclear plant versus a team that is develop developing a game, a low profile game, let's say, probably the team with developing software for a nuclear plant is going to have a lot more strict risk posture. Uh, there will be uh, the risks are going to might have catastrophic consequences, which means that team is likely not to tolerate any risks. So their target posture is going to be much higher. We will try to get to a much higher score for that team versus the game developers where we don't really care about them because we don't really process any data. Not much can go wrong. So they don't have to get such high points. And to compare these teams next to each other, we use this relative scores to target. And the relative score indicates what it says. How far are we from our target? To set up those targets, in the SAMI tool, we have the concept of target scopes, but that is not part of this demo. Feel free to view other uh, tutorials of the tool that where you can see how the target scopes are, are, are set up. We are continuously adding new frameworks to the SAMI tool. And we categorize the frameworks into an assessment framework or a control framework. 
the assessment frameworks could be a maturity framework, a program framework, a compliance framework. It doesn't really matter how you call them, but the idea is that you will always have an assessment step, an assessment component for that framework. Control frameworks are somewhat different. You are not really going to do an assessment for a control frameworks. You're actually going to implement the control framework or introduce some of those controls from a control framework into your control library. So for the control frameworks, we have a concept of library of controls and a set of controls that you're going to implement as an organization, either for the whole organization or for a specific scope. The set of library of controls, so the control frameworks that we have currently in the SAMI tool include NIST 853, Cloud Controls Matrix and ISO 27002 framework. And the ones that are planned are security controls frameworks and OWASP ASVS, which is a requirements framework, but then the difference between a control and a requirement is very subtle. And I would like to further define that. So this is how we see conceptually the difference between a, an assessment framework, a control framework, and a requirement framework. So you, an assessment framework provides you with an idea, a topic. It talks about, for instance, protect. And then at the level, at the different levels of the frameworks, in this case, in this CSF 2.0, it zooms further and further all the way to a level of subcategory. And at the level of subcategory, we have uh, the, the subcategory basically tells you that you have to manage and you have to manage correctly your user services and hardware make sure they are authenticated. These, this, this subcategory or these items in that framework then map to a list of controls. And controls are your risk reducing, mitigating countermeasures. And you can then implement these controls specifically for a, specific, for a certain software system by using then requirements or so mapping controls into security requirements. The, late, the last part of that is not within the tool, but then the first two aspects are clearly implemented today in the SAMI tool where we have an assessment framework, a program framework, and then a list of controls that map to that. And in the next part, in this part of the presentation, I'm going to show you how that works in the tool. Let's first start by picking uh, a framework which is not SAM. First of all, we have added uh, a browser, a framework browser, where you can just browse a framework without doing an assessment. This is pretty cool because it, it used to be that you have to first start an assessment for a certain framework so that you can check the, the, the framework itself. Now you have a framework browser where you can just click through and see how the framework looks like in the SAMI tool. Let's go to CSF. This is how the CSF tool is implemented in the SAMI tool. By the way, it's completely in line with the CSF implementation itself. Uh, it is it maps one to one with CSF 2.0. Um, this is what the CSF framework looks like with the different um, categories and subcategories and functions. And then we can uh, start an assessment for this framework. And the assessment looks pretty much like like here. So if we switch to an assessment armor and shield, the same uh, scope, and do an assessment for CSF, we can start filling out again, the answers for each uh, CSF subcategory. And the list of answers is again in line with the NIST uh, standard where we have four tiers, partial risk informed, repeatable, adaptive. And then we have also added two more selections for uh, your convenience. There is the implicitly, if you're not doing anything for a specific subcategory, it's a no answer. Uh, so the no answer is explicitly added here. You could also say this is not really applicable to me. Uh, as you know, for instance, in SAM, that is not possible by definition. NIST doesn't say uh, anything about that. NIST actually says that you could have a not, not applicable answer. If at any point NIST changes their uh, recommendation, we are gladly going to change this answer. Again, the assessment looks exactly the same. You can provide validation remarks and recommendations. So nothing is changing the overall flow of the SAMI tool is still the same for any type of framework, any assessment, uh, sorry, any type of assessment framework. And then you can do this and then fill out a full assessment for a different framework. Reporting, by the way, doesn't change either. You can have a, in this case, I've added only one answer. And that's why my score is this low. Uh, the scale here is, of course, adapted. I think the maximum score is uh, five or, uh, no, sorry, four which maps to the concept of the tiers. 
uh, tier four is the score four. That's how we interpret it. Now, uh, again, the list of all frameworks is listed um, on our website and in the framework browser. Please note that some of frameworks are subject to uh, licensing constraints. And currently two frameworks are in that space, ISO 27001 and IEC 64443, uh, 62443. And these frameworks are not going to show up for the free tier of the SAMI tool. So these are only available in the paid tier. All other frameworks are available for everyone else. Um, I'm not gonna go through each and every framework. If you're looking for a framework that is not here, please contact us, we can add new frameworks. If uh, on the other hand, you have a corporate license, uh, either pro or enterprise, we can also add frameworks which are specific for your organization. So let's say you have a custom version of CSF. I cannot imagine why you would do that, but again, every organization is unique. So no judgment here. If you have your own framework, we are happily, uh, we will be happy to add it in the list of frameworks and your own framework obviously is not going to show up for everyone else. It's going to be limited for your organization. Now let's have a look at controls. If we go to the list of controls, which is accessible through manage controls. First of all, we have our list of controls, but I will come back to this later. More importantly, we can now browse the control frameworks. And as I've mentioned in the intro part, the controls frameworks don't really have an assessment. You can browse through them, so you can view the control frameworks. You can also, we also have search and, and some additional filtering. Uh, let's go to configuration management, for instance. So these are all the controls in the family configuration management in NIST 853. You can browse through, through these controls and you can decide, hey, you know what? I want to have, I want to implement base-like configuration for our organization. We have to implement this. And you can import that control. Once you do that, the control will show, you, show up in the list of your controls. What can you do now with these controls? Well, first of all, you have to go and implement them, for which we have integration with Jira. Uh, and it is not of, in the scope of this demo to tell you how that works, but basically you can hook up this control and implement it in Jira, where your team is going to do that. And you don't really want to have everyone in your team switch to a new tool like the SAMI tool. SAMI tool is great, don't get me wrong, but you want your, your teams are not gonna like using five new tools every day. They want to stick to what they know. So they will still go and in, work in Jira and implement it in Jira. And then whenever they are done, it will show up, uh, the status will update here. What you could also do, and that is something very cool, is you can hook up the, this control to a framework. For instance, in the SAMI, uh, in, sorry, in the SAM framework, um, we know there is a specific topic related to configuration hardening. Um, let me see if I can find it. Yes, so configuration hardening, uh, OEM. And then we can hook up this control to that SAM element. Another interesting feature for controls is related to the documentation aspect for the control. As you know, documentation is an inherent part of your assessment and you can use documentation for adding different sorts of information like validation, remarks, recommendations, Evidences, you can do the same for uh, controls. So controls come with a documentation feature where you can add evidence or any remarks. Another cool thing about controls is that once you hook up controls to your assessment elements, so for instance, we've hooked up this CM2 from NIST to the SAM uh, element related to environment management. In the reporting aspect, once you pull a report, an assessment report, and by the way, my assessment report is going to be very raw because I haven't done much for this assessment. But if you fill out the full assessment, the assessment is going to be complete and it will also contain a link to that control. So in this case, we have added uh, a control to the uh, environment management. And as you can see, next to the assessment information itself, there is also a link to controls and control is listed here. Let's look at the next topic from our agenda and that is mappings. So the SAMI tool allows you to look into direct mappings between two frameworks and we consider this high quality mappings because they have been done manually. 
We have also integrated OWASP OpenCRE project, which is great because it allows you to map between many, many standards by using a central common requirements enumeration, which is the OpenCRE project. Let's see how that looks in the tool. In the SAMI tool, we have two ways of dealing with mappings. You could either map complete frameworks, and in this case, we are going to map between OWASP SAM, so the currently selected assessment framework, which is indicated here at the top, and any framework which comes from the dropdown. Uh, in this case, the star marked frameworks are the ones which are directly mapped. And aside from the star marked frameworks, we also have a list of frameworks which are coming from OpenCRE. So you could use a mapping between SAM and, for instance, ESVS. In this case, it will it is going to show you uh, the SAM streams on the left side and SVS entries on the right side. There are various use cases for this. Let's go to another mapping, for instance, SSDF. So a SAM SSDF mapping could be useful for compliance. By the way, the SAMI tool doesn't guarantee any compliance, so we're, the mappings are just indicative. And in this case, we also provide the SAM score for this activity. You could export this to Excel and show it to your partners, if you're selling, uh, if you're a vendor for any US federal agency, they want to see an SSDF self assessment. And let's say you're using SAM for your um, AppSec uh, as an AppSec management program, you could do this mapping and immediately get an assessment in SSDF format. Uh, sorry, uh, get an export of how your SSDF looks like in terms of your SAM assessments. You could also map to CSF or any other frameworks which look exactly the same. Now, this is one way of doing mappings. It's, it maps full frameworks and you can export the results of that to Excel. Another pretty cool use case is using uh, mappings to control frameworks. And in order to see which controls you need to implement, and we're gonna switch to NIST CSF because we have a direct mapping between CSF and 853, which comes from NIST, by the way. Uh, so if we're doing a CSF assessment and we want to see, hey, I want to implement this, but I don't know how. Tell me how do I have to do it? And NIST comes with uh, the, the 853 family of controls. You could use this mapping to immediately see which controls you have to, you have to implement in order to uh, provide uh, achievement or getting to some set of maturity, uh, some maturity level for this subcategory. This is the list of controls, or in this case, it's one control. And you can say, you know what, I want to import this to my list of controls and start working on that. This is another uh, very cool use case for controls. And for each assessment, you can also view the list of controls that are already in your library. So you can go to this and say, you know what, so these are your all already existing controls in your library. And you can also hook up uh, your subcategories or the assessment elements to an existing uh, set of controls. So you can do this and this will be hooked up to this, uh, this control will be hooked up to this current element. You will see that here popping up and you can no longer indicate that link. Out of the box, the SAMI tool has a full integration with various resources provided by the OWASP SAM project. That includes things like community guidance that help you interpret and implement a certain stream as well as SAM core team guidance, which typically contains things like other OWASP SAM projects, which can help you with a specific stream at a certain maturity level, as well as references to OpenCRE related topics. From this version of the SAMI tool, we have added uh, the endorsed vendors and solutions that can help you implement a certain stream. So for every stream, we will be showing you uh, a recommended vendor that is endorsed by Codific that brings certain product or consultancy or technology, which can help you with the implementation of, uh, of the given stream. If you are a vendor that is looking to showcase your products and you believe you can help organizations implementing certain SAM activities, feel free to contact us so we could uh, add you to this list. Note that we will be only showing one vendor per stream. This is only applicable for the SAM model. Currently, we don't consider adding this same idea to any other uh, framework. Last but not least, we have added a new feature in the SAMI tool 
that helps implementation partners and resellers manage some assessments at scale for their own uh, organizations. Uh, this is this feature is mainly focused to help you uh, manage the security journey of your customers. Let's see how that looks in the tool. If you get that reseller access, please contact us if you're interested in um, becoming an implementation partner. So this is typically with the assumption that you are a SAM practitioner, SAM practitioner, and you're doing that for other organizations. You will have this menu, uh, this feature where you can manage organizations. And so, for instance, these are organizations that belong to my space, to my organization, and you can create and manage them uh, as much as you wish. Let's say we will add Google. Uh, under our organization. You can pick the type of the subscription uh, for their users. And once that organization is added, you can actually switch to that organization and uh, create an assessment for them. So if you're an external party and you have many organizations that you're doing a SAM assessment for, this is ideal scenario for that. And you can switch to that organization, create a scope. Uh, and then uh, run a SAM assessment for uh, that scope. Once you complete that assessment, all that information stays within uh, that organization's space and you can always exit that and then re revert to your own uh, organization. 